hello and welcome back to Seaside Garage and the Lowman diesel moped. Um, yeah, I know I called this a diesel engine. Apparently it's not a diesel engine. I'm not going to go much into that, but it is true. It is not by definition a diesel engine because it doesn't have an injection and, and a diesel pump and all that. This is actually an auto ignition engine, but it is running on diesel. It is supposed to run on diesel at least. And it turns out that it's really popular among you guys at least. Last evening when I checked the video when I tried to start this up was being viewed I think 3000 times an hour which is way more than what Seaside Garage videos normally are viewed. It's more like 3000 views so that's quite impressive and I was hoping that because in my mind this is extremely exciting and it's nice to see that I'm not alone being such a weirdo. Anyway I want to try it one more time, this time with me on the bike, hopefully. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to air up the tires. And in the previous video, I got it to fire. Uh, I had a hard time keeping it running. It seemed like it was running out of fuel very uh, quickly. I ended up actually almost removing the needle assembly in here to make it work. Uh, that's not supposed to be like that. I have been do doing some reading after that and got a manual on this one. Although it is possible to run on diesel, it's not necessarily put up for that. There is an adjustable needle in here. And according to the manual, I found the best fuel to be running on is kerosene uh, mixed with two-stroke oil. Um, this is normal new modern diesel. And I think that could be a problem for this engine because I think there are some stabilizers and stuff that makes auto ignition a little bit more difficult. Um, so what I'm going to do is drain this out and replace it with kerosene mixed with 1 to 20 two-stroke oil. And then there's something else mentioned in that manual that I didn't know about. This line needs to be filled before this is being filled, so you don't have any airlines, just like on a normal diesel. It wouldn't really, I don't really know why that matters that much, but I think that could be the running out of fuel problem that I'm having, that it so, sort of just stops uh, sucking it in. It is not an injection system, so air in the system shouldn't really matter, but the manual states to fill the line up before the rest, so I'm gonna try that. Firstly, I'm gonna get rid of this old fuel. One of the most amazing things about YouTube is that I I get in contact with yeah you guys who are watching this video because this is a really nerdy piece of of history and there are there are really not a lot of people who are interested in this uh, when you look at it per, per square kilometer but globally and on YouTube there are a lot of us who are nerdy about this kind of stuff. And it's amazing to be able to show this kind of stuff to someone, to people who actually appreciate it. Let's just let this drain out. Hopefully it doesn't fall down and spill all over the place because it's stinky stuff, this diesel. Let's mix up some kerosene. It seems as though this engine can actually run on a quite huge array of fuels. It just needs some adjustment in the needle and how you ride it. And also different fuels have different characteristics. So some fuels are more powerful than others. But it's quite interesting. Oh, there is a non-return valve in this one. It's gonna be... So this is one liter of kerosene and we're going to add 50 milliliters of two-stroke oil. And then we're going to mix it really well because otherwise it will just, as you might be, might be able to see, stay at the bottom end. That way the fuel will actually not go into the engine, it will just be blocked by the oil, which is most likely too thick to pass, to pass through that needle. So it needs to be mixed really well. 
like this. And then I'm gonna take a sample of this to fill up the, uh, the fuel line. Like this. Let's get to work on the bike. So the old fuel is now drained. Let's close the fuel valve. The fuel tank, by the way, is not the original one. It is saying MB or Mopi letter on it, so it's for a French moped. It is not the correct for the Loman diesel, but uh, it's doing the job just fine. Could be fun to do some experiments on this bike if it runs. Like how far can I go on a liter? Maybe just half a liter. I don't have all day. Uh, <laughs> and maybe also trying on vegetable, vegetable oil and stuff like that. It could be fun to make a self-sufficient moped system by making some kind of oil in the garden and then run on that. Most likely it's illegal, I have to check that, but it would be a fun project anyway. Just gonna make sure that it runs out. It does just fine. Now let's fill up that line by dripping in fuel up here. There we go. Now it's completely full. So there we go. Ah, come on, let's test it out. start. But it was a struggle to keep it going. And it really did not make a lot of power. I'm just adjusting a bit on the uh, on the throttle cable because I think I can't turn it down far enough. It is running, there's <laughs> not a lot of power. I think much of it is down to me trying to figure out how to put the handles. It likes, the compression needs to be quite a lot lower once it kicks in. There's just not a lot of power. Oh, this hill is too steep now. <laughs> Maybe this was invented for people who thought that bicycling, bicycling was was too easy. So no compression. Then I'm turning up the compression. There we go. Kicks in. I lower the compression a bit. The engine is helping me at the moment, but not a lot. It's supposed to make all 175 horsepower, which is not a lot. But it's more than this. I'm not, I'm not getting it completely right. Or something is wrong. Could also be the case, of course. I'm surprised how low the compression needs to go when it's started up. Oh. 
might need some more adjustment. Yes, I know I really shouldn't be this exhausted from trying to start this one, but it is a little bit tough and I'm, I'm not in the best of, uh, of shapes at the moment, if ever. Anyway, it is able to start actually by itself pretty easily without any kind of preheat. It is difficult to really test it out right here where I live because it's going downhill, then uphill, then downhill, uphill. There's no really any straight roads just around the garage. Because I think on a straight road it would pull itself decent with maybe 15 kilometers power, maybe a little, little bit more. When it hits a hill you will have to bicycle and adjust compression and drip ratio at the same time, which is, you know, kind of thing. Um, of course you could get used to it, but it is a little bit difficult. Going downhill, it's really, really, really nice. Uh, but I don't think it's because of the engine, I think it's because of the big wheels. Um, but interesting moped, really interesting moped, that's for sure. I think it seems to be running better on the kerosene comparing it to the diesel, uh, but it's hard to say because it's completely different scenarios now on the road comparing it to the previous video with a drill. So, uh, but I'm not gonna do the drill thing again because I need to sit right next to the exhaust. Take a look at this. Those trousers after that experiment are not allowed inside the house anymore. So uh, I won't do that again. <laughs> the smell is extreme. Anyway, this video is a bit hastily put together. I could test it out a bit more and I will do that. But I just want this video out because there was so much interest in the previous video and a lot of people are asking if I could test it on the road. And I can understand after watching that long video that uh, you would really like to see the moped actually being in action. So uh, yeah, but I will be continue working on this and trying to fine tune it and figure out how to get it to run the best way. As mentioned, I'm a bit surprised about how little compression it actually needs to run once it kicks in. You need to give it a lot of compression, then the auto ignition starts, and then you really have to put it down quite a lot to uh, make it run. So, and the throttle is in the middle way, in the middle or something like that. So maybe there is some adjustment about the needle maybe to make it able to run at higher compression. I don't know. Uh, at least this is really exciting to work on because it's completely unknown territory for me. I now know a lot more about these thanks to you guys commenting, commenting uh, on the previous video because this is not a normal two-stroke engine, diesel engine. It is an auto-ignition engine, which is known from RC aircraft and stuff like that. Apparently they are being used in boats also. Uh, it should be a very efficient and very non-polluting way to make a diesel engine, I think. Not this one though. Anyway, thank you for watching and see you in the next one.